and I had to take off my hat because the it, the sweat was just running. So I got my sweat rag. You other baldies out there, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, here with me. You can use it. I know it'd be a little odd, but you can use it if you need to. Okay. It was so funny. I had that was at the roping Saturday, and I had my sweat rag in in my belt like this. And some of the guys would be like, "Man, what do you got that rag for?" And, I, and by the end of the day, everybody's just drenched in sweat. And I said, "Uh huh. You want my sweat rag, don't you?" Let's uh, let's get right into God's word today. And this is something. Uh, did everybody get handouts? Did you get a copy of my notes? Because I won't teach all of them. If you didn't, we have notes that we'd like for you to take. Look at it. Get it in you. But this topic is very important. Um, And so for the next little bit that we're together, would you mind giving God your best? And let's use this time as a time to grow. I mean, we're sweating anyway, so might as well get something out of it, right? And um, think about... What's the difference, and and maybe you haven't thought about it, I know I have, I'm sure you have thought about it. What's the difference between a person that is just average and a person that's an overachiever or a person that gets a lot of results or it seems like whatever they do, they succeed at it. Does anybody know anybody like that? Hopefully you and I are in the process of becoming that. But asking ourselves, okay, what makes the difference between a person that is average and a person achieving exceptional results. Is it, is it money? You can look at studies and you can see that a lot of people that achieve a lot of great things, they don't come from money. Money is a great thing. I mean, we, need it. we wouldn't be here without money, right? But money is not an indicator whether somebody accomplishes their dream or does great things or not. Is it family? Family is great. I'm thankful. I look at all the families and we need our families to be strong. But people that do great things, a lot of people come from broken families. Is it, is it opportunities? No, you can have people with the similar gifts, that the same opportunities, and one does something great and one doesn't do anything great. You, you might have heard the story of the two sh- shoe salesmen that they were dropped on this island and... And they're walking around and they're looking at the island and they look and they see nobody's wearing shoes. You know, two, two people, same opportunity, same circumstances. And they're looking around and one guy calls back to the office and he says, man, I'm, I'm coming home. Nobody wears shoes here. And the other guy, he's looking around, he calls back to the office. He says, send me 10,000 pairs of shoes because everybody needs shoes here. So it's the same circumstances, same opportunity But one person can see an opportunity to overcome and the other person sees an opportunity to quit. Is it is it is it adversity? You know, is it somebody but they do so good because they didn't have adversity in their life? Well maybe you don't have adversity like some people do, but a lot of times you have people like Helen Keller, she was blind, but she had a lot of vision. She couldn't see with her eyes, but she could see with her heart and she did great things. You have Victor Frankel who was a cap captive captured in a concentration camp and he went on to help people around the world. It's Nick Voyatage. I don't know if you've seen Nick before. Nick doesn't have arms. He doesn't have legs. He's just about three and a half feet tall. And, and Nick, he has what he calls a little chicken wing. And Nick, even though he doesn't have arms and legs, he can still do his espresso. He has a wife. He has a kid. He still skydives. He still types 45 words a minute with his little chicken wing. And he changes people's life around the world. So we're asking, okay, what makes the difference between a person who gets average results and a person who achieves great things? Now, when we think about this difference, I wrote down in your notes, page two, the difference between average people and people who achieve is their perception and response to failure. I'm going to read it again. The difference between average people and people who achieve is their perception and response to failure. How do you see failure? Do you see failure as as a a thing that's going to shut you down? Or do you see failure in a light that's going to help you grow? How do you see failure? What is your perception of failure? Say this with me. E plus R equals O. E event plus R response equals O outcome. I can't control all the events that happen in my life. 
but I can control my response, which is going to determine my outcome. E plus R equals O. I can't control what kind of steer I draw or goat you draw or what the judges say or what people say on social media. I can't control certain things, but I can control how I think. I can't control the way that I believe. I can't control whether I let go of the steer I just messed up or the horse or the barrel run you just messed up. You can control that. Say it, I can't control that. I can control what I think. I can't control the way I believe. I can, can control my attitude. I can control my words. I can not control how I respond to this event that I couldn't control, but I can control me, and it's going to determine my outcome. I cannot control what's going on in the government, but I can control what I do with my gifts, my talents, my calling, my assignment. I can't control what you do, but I can control whether I show up today or not. I can not control whether I'm going to praise when I don't feel like praising. I can not control whether I'm going to come to church even when I'm cooking my biscuits. <laughs> Which is going to determine our outcome. So the difference between somebody who is average and somebody who achieves a lot is their perception of failure. Just saying the word failure, I don't like it any more than you do. But failure, it isn't if you're going to fail. It isn't if you're going to miss. It isn't if you're going to make mistakes. It isn't if life is going to happen to you. It isn't if bad things are going to come. I'm not being negative. I'm just, we're preparing today. For the next few minutes we're together, we're preparing. How do I look at the problem? Because the problem isn't the problem most of the time. The problem is how I look at the problem. The difference between me becoming everything I'm called and created to be and me being average and God never showing up for me. I would go to every different type of church and I'm always asking, how come God shows up over here? How come there's miracles and signs and wonders? And I go to this church and they haven't seen the power of God in 30 years. Why? What is the difference? between a person achieving something, us becoming our best, us accomplishing what God has put in front of us, us developing the business and having a strong family and developing our gifts and our callings and our assignment. Could it be the way that we look at failure? Today I want us to switch the way we look at failure and start having a fail forward mindset instead of a fail backward mindset. Say it, fail forward. When I miss a steer, I'm going to fail forward. When I break a barrier, we're going to fail forward. When a relationship doesn't go the way I want it, we're going to fail forward. When a business deal doesn't go the way we want it, we're going to fail forward. Say it, fail forward. I'm going to fail forward. With God, I'm going to fail forward. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trials and tribulations and circumstances and problems. Anybody experienced any of that? Come on. <laughs> but don't stop reading there. He says, but be of good cheer. He says, I've already overcame it and I've deprived it of power to harm you. And in other words, he says, if you'll stay in relationship with me, if you'll keep going after me and keep being a doer of my word, I'm going to help you overcome whatever life throws your way. I'm not talking to you about being religious. I'm talking about you and I going after Almighty God and us being the best us we can be, realizing that circumstances, problems, mistakes, those things are going to happen and I'm not afraid of making mistakes. I'm going to fail forward. Say it, I'm going to fail forward. I'm going to learn to fail forward. Listen to this uh, quote I wrote down here. Soccer player, professional soccer player, Kyle wrote. He says, There's no doubt in my mind that there are many ways to be a winner, but there are really only one way to be a loser, and that is to fail and not look beyond your failure. The one thing about rodeo, it doesn't matter how good you get, the reason that I'm able to accomplish certain things in the rodeo world is because I have missed a lot. You get good at rodeo, you get good at business, you get good at life. You know what? It's going to be because you've made a lot of mistakes, but you were willing to fail forward. Say it, fail forward. Psalms 23 verse 5, the psalmist David says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Think about what he's saying. He says, God, in the middle of this problem, you prepared a table before me right here in the presence of this problem. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's a relational situation. I like that. He don't even know I'm here. This is awesome. 
And David says, I'm going to pull up to the table and I'm going to eat some courage and I'm going to eat some forgiveness and I'm going to realize the mercy of God is new every day and I'm going to realize that if God is for me, nobody can be against me and I realize that God created me for a purpose and a destiny for such a time as this and nobody can stop me from being who God has called and created me to be. But David says, I've got to choose to pull up to the table and in the middle of my enemies, I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow. I'm going to fail forward. Say it, fail forward. I'm going to fail forward. The Apostle Paul reads in 1 Corinthians 16, 9. He says, For a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me. They're a great and promising one, and there are many adversaries. What is he saying? There's a lot of opportunity out there, but I know connected to the opportunity, there's going to be a lot of things to overcome. Say it, fail forward. We're going to fail forward with those dogs. <laughs> Say it again. Fell forward. Now, every one of us, y'all stay with... You know, the great thing I like about preaching in environments like this is it's a really good opportunity to work on our mental game. You know, to, to overcome distractions and to stay dialed in. And, and just like in the arena, there's a lot of things going on. Remember, we're going to control... What we can control, we can't control the dogs going after each other, right? But we can control whether we stay focused or not. We can't control what social media is saying out there, but we can control whether we show up for our event or not. And there's certain things that all of us have to overcome when it comes to failing forward, when it comes to having dealing with, with fear and failure. Listen to this. The perception that all of us have to overcome is the fear of failure. Anybody ever been afraid to fail in life? I know I'm not the only one. Hey, hey, kids, think about this. When you ride into the box, when you think about, I hope I don't break the barrier, that's a form of fear. I hope I don't fall off this steer, that's a form of fear. I hope I don't rope a leg, that's a form of fear. I hope I don't hit this barrel, that's a form of fear. And listen, this will help you if there's a scripture that you want to get into your heart just in life. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God did not, when you feel the fear, and everybody feels fear at times, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. How do we overcome the spirit of fear? We overcome it with the spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We, if you're a born again child of God, you've come into the family of God, it says, We have the spirit of faith. Now think with me. The same spirit of faith that Jesus had. The same spirit of faith that David had. The same spirit of faith that Noah had. We having the same spirit of faith, we choose to believe God's Word and we speak God's Word because we have the spirit of faith. So whenever a circumstance comes, you're afraid of what's going on in the economy, parents. You're afraid, kids, that okay, you're, you're hoping you don't rope a leg or miss or break the barrier. Whatever it is, you come back with what does God say? You overcome fear with faith. So the economy goes up and down. We come back with my God supplies all of my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. A doctor's report comes in and fear is coming in there. You come back with by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed and I'm made whole. That's how we fail forward when fear comes. Find out what God says and apply His Word to your life. Faith arises. We overcome fear through the Word of God which is the only thing that brings faith in the arena. If you're afraid you're not going to show up, you're afraid your horse isn't going to... You're afraid... No, no. Open your mouth. We have the same spirit of faith. But it's our choice to believe God's Word and to speak God's Word and we overcome with the spirit of faith. So we overcame... We overcome fear by faith. Say it. We overcome fear by faith. That's failing forward. How do we fail forward? Job chapter 3 verse 25... It says, For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I dreaded has happened to me. Every one of us, see, fear, please, please stay with me, we're only together a few minutes. Fear is a spiritual force that gives Satan a right to operate in our life. How many, and listen to what I'm saying. How many of us really want Satan to work in our life? Can I see your hand if you want the devil to work in your life? Fear is not something to play with. But listen, faith 
is a spiritual force that gives God a right to work in our life. How many of you want God to work in your life? So when all of us have to deal with this, when fear tries to stick its head up, the solution to fail forward is go to God's Word and allow your faith to rise. The answer is always run to Him. The answer, I'm, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about really going after the heart of God and you're allowing what He's saying to penetrate your heart and faith begins to rise. So how do we overcome fear? Talk to me. With faith. How do we overcome fear? And where does faith come from? God's Word. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Talk to me one more time. How do we overcome fear? By faith. Another perception of failure is we can misunderstand failure. Think with me. We, we go to elementary. We go to junior high. We go to high school. We go to college. And is 69 passing or failing? Talk to me. So we're trained to think that failure is a percentage. And failure is not a percentage. Failure is not an event. Failure is not a circumstance. So we misunderstand failure. The only Listen to me. The only time we fail is when we quit. So we misunderstand failure. Third thing. So, so we got to overcome the fear. A failure, we overcome fear by how? With faith, right? Okay, so um, we misunderstand failure. We think that failure is a percentage. It's not. We're unprepared. Listen to me. Unprepared for failure. Did anybody ever take a class in elementary on how to fail? Did anybody take a class in junior high, high school, college on how to fail? I hate, I, I, it, it just cringes me, I don't like losing. But we only lose when we don't learn. We only lose when we quit. So we, we aren't prepared to miss the steer for a lot of money. We're not prepared for the business deal to go south. We're not prepared. Listen, listen. Addiction, alcoholism, drug addiction, a victim mentality, a bad attitude. All of those things are connected to a person not knowing how to deal with people not liking them. Not knowing how to deal with not being at the top of the ladder. Not knowing how to deal with not succeeding. So how do we overcome... Our fear is by faith. So since we didn't take that class in junior high or elementary or high school or college, we're gonna, we get to take it today. What makes the difference between a person who is average and a person who achieves is their perception of failure. We're going to fail forward. Say it, fail forward. Fail forward. Now just stay with me. I know it's a it's a different topic, but I really feel like this was the direction we're supposed to go. Listen to this. Two different ways to look at mistakes. One is failing backwards and one is failing forward. Which way do we want to go? We want to learn to fail forward, right? Because life happens. The, the stuff happens in the arena. We're going to fail forward. From this day forward, we're going to have a fail forward mentality. Listen to this. Failing backwards is blaming others. Failing forward is taking responsibility. Come on, come on, this is so good. Everybody stick your finger up. Now do this right here. Who is responsible for you? Exactly. Failing backwards is blaming others. It's not our parents' responsibility. It's not the government's responsibility. It's not anybody else. It's not your boss's responsibility. It's not the employee's responsibility. Failing backwards is blaming others. But failing forward is I'm going to own it. If I swatted one in the butt, own it. If I broke the barrier, own it. If I didn't ride my horse good, own it. If I didn't make a good decision in business, own it. If I was the one that messed up the relationship, talk to me. Own it. Own it. Failing forward is taking responsibility. Jesus said, we make the tree good and the fruit good. Or we make the tree bad and the fruit bad. Failing forward is taking responsibility. Listen to this. Failing backwards is continuing to repeat the same mistake. Failing forward is learning from each mistake. Failing forward 
Failing backwards is thinking you'll never fail again. Failing forwards is knowing that failure is a part of progress. Failing backwards is expecting to continually fail. Failing forwards is maintaining a positive attitude and expecting to get better. When we make a mistake, we expect to learn and get better. When we make a mistake, we expect to learn and get better. When we make a mistake, we expect to talk to me and get better. Failing forward is not allowing the circumstance to define us, not allowing the catch or miss to define us, allowing the one who created us to define us and to expect to learn and to get better. Say it, fail forward. Failing backwards is being limited by past mistakes. Failing forward is taking a new risk. Failing backwards is thinking you are a failure. And failing forward is realizing that didn't work. Failing backwards is quitting. And failing forward is persevering. Failing forward is persevering. Failing forward is persevering. So we want to have the right definition of success now and the right definition of failure. I might need a wig or something tomorrow. Maybe it'll help me. I, you know, I had a toboggan. I think for the last time I was in Amarillo, there's a toboggan in the side of my truck. And I thought, I might just wear that toboggan. I mean, that's, at least it'll catch my sweat anyway. So, so let's, let's think. And I'm not going to go much longer, but I want us to think. Okay, so if, if there's a difference, stay with me here. If there's a difference... Between where I'm at and success, if there's a difference between average and achieving, and the reality is that difference isn't very big, what's the little thing that makes the big difference? And it's persistence. Yes, it's attitude, but it's persistence. There's not much difference between a person who doesn't accomplish and a person who does accomplish. But the person who does accomplish... They fell forward. Say it fell forward. They are persistent. So how do we stir our persistent? How do we begin to, to put a little stoke the fire of persistence? So whenever life knocks us down, because remember, it's not if you miss. It's not if things go haywire. It's not if life happens. It's going to happen. But from this day forward, we're going to fail forward. And the first step to fail forward is to run to Him. Hear what He's saying because we overcome fear with faith, which comes from what He's saying. And then we apply what He's telling us to apply. And we fail forward. So I heard it come out of Pastor Robert a while ago. Let's have a solution mindset. Failing forward, rider, is a solution mindset. We're going to learn and we're going to expect to get better. We're going to learn and we're going to expect God to help us turn around things. So how do I stir my fire of being persistent? Please hear me. Learn to know why you're here. Find your purpose. Adults and kids, the sooner we know why we're wired the way we're wired, why we're gifted the way we're gifted, it helps us get up and practice and put in the work because we know there's a bigger picture. We know our why. Your purpose. Proverbs 19.21 says, The purpose of God remains forever. In other words, it's in you right now. Kids, look up here at me. I want your eyes right here. You don't have to wait until you're my age to know what God created you to do. God is speaking to you right now. That desire you have in you, that passion you have in you, act on it right now. Please hear me. Because God works with movement. You have a desire to rope. How did Robert and I meet? How am I doing things all around the world? It has to do with the desire I wanted to be good at my roping. I wanted to know God and I wanted, I wanted to be the best me I can be and it started connecting relationships and opportunities and the people around you. How do you stir your persistence? Know why you're here and it's not about money. Money makes a bad motivator. But when you know why you're here, you know your purpose. Purpose always brings provision. Listen, purpose brings provision. So the sooner you can know your purpose, you're taking classes out of purpose, you're going to college out of purpose, you're surrounding yourself because of purpose, you're going to have this persistence that nobody can stop you from being who God's called and created you to be. The government can't do it, your friends can't do it, the devil can't do it, because you know I'm created for something greater than I'm walking in right now. Listen to me kids, eyes back up here. You are created for greatness and you need to realize that God is speaking to you that desire, that passion, that gifting, that wiring. 
begin to move. You begin to surround yourself with the right people, other people that they know who they are and where they're going. I can't tell you the value in surrounding yourself with people that are full of passion. I was doing a deal in Florida a couple months ago with Deion Sanders and he, uh, he was talking about when he'd go to the football games, you know, he's the coach at Colorado now and he played NFL for years and everything. He said, I would be on the field. I want you to think of this. And he said, I'd look up in the stands and I'd see the people at the game, but they really weren't in the game. And he said, then I began to look around at the coaches and they had the headset and they have a degree of knowledge about the game. They were at the game, but they really weren't in the game. He said, then I looked in the huddle at all my buddies that were all around. I'm looking in all their eyes and I can realize that some of them are at the game, but they're really not in the game. He said, there was three or four of us that were in the game and that's who I surrounded myself with. And it just made me to think about the people in my life. Are the people in my life, are they in the game or are they just at the game? Are they just coming to church and going through the motions? Or are they after the heart of God? Are they thinking from a destiny mindset? Do they really want results in their life? Or do they just want to be religious and get no results and go nowhere really fast? I'm not in for that. I want to know God. I want each of us to make a difference in this industry. And one of the ways we're going to make a difference and keep making a difference is learning to fail forward. How do I stir that passion to be persistent. Know your purpose. Are the people you're surrounding yourself with, are they at the game? Or are they in the game? Say it, I'm in the game. Number two, way to stir your, your persistence, your passion. Number two, eliminate excuses. Oh, this is a good one. Eliminate excuses. Everybody look up here at me and smile. Eliminate excuses. You know what the definition of an excuse is? An invalid reason for neglecting your duty. When you look in the Webster's Dictionary, it says an excuse is an invalid reason for you neglecting your duty. Well, I don't have enough money. <clears throat> Wrong answer. Well, I don't have the horse that they have. <clears throat> Wrong answer. Well, I don't have the family they have. <clears throat> Wrong answer. Eliminate excuses. Say it, eliminate excuses. There's no good reason for me not being the man God's called and created me to be. There's no good reason for you not being the person God's called and created you to be. Eliminate excuses. George Washington Carver said 99% of people fail because of excuses. How many of you have a, a belly button? Okay, every one of us have a, a belly button just like most everyone has excuses. What excuse... Are you holding on to that's holding you and I back from failing forward? Say it, fell forward. Listen to this. Excuses. There was a guy by the name of Dean Rhodes. And he didn't allow missed opportunities. He didn't make excuses for going forward. Listen to this. Dean Rhodes, he missed a lot of opportunities, but he met this man by the name of Dave Thomas who gave him the opportunity to invest in this startup hamburger place called Wendy's, and he didn't. Say it, he didn't. Then he went on and he met a guy by the name of Colonel Sanders and had the option to buy stock into his chicken company, and he didn't. Say it, he didn't. Which later became Kentucky Fried Chicken. He went on and he was selling business machines and a, a man by the name of Ray Kroc gave him an opportunity to buy into his startup hamburger stand called McDonald's. And guess what? He, did. he didn't. Then he's on a cruise and this lawyer tried to talk him in to buy into his son's startup computer company, but he didn't because it had a funny name called Microsoft. But he didn't stop. Say it, he didn't stop. Just because he missed opportunities, he didn't stop. Just because he didn't make the right decision, he did not stop. Just because he had the opportunity, but he didn't maximize the opportunity, he did not stop. Say it, he did not stop. 
he fell forward and eventually he was found on Forbes 500 businesses around the world. The top businesses around the world because he did not quit. He eliminated excuses and he fell forward. Say it, fell forward. Third thing and we're going to get be done right here. To, to stir in our, our persistence is determination. Say it, determination. So to stir our persistence... We want to stir a passion. We want to discover our purpose. Surround ourselves with the right people. We want to eliminate excuses. Say it, eliminate excuses. Well, my horse didn't fire. Uh, wrong answer. I didn't draw the right cap. Uh, wrong answer. They tilted the barrel a little bit in the barrel race. Uh, wrong answer. Well, they dried out the ground a little bit. Uh, wrong answer. All right, barrel race pair, smile at me. I is one, so I know how you think. We eliminate excuses. The third thing... Cultivate determination. Listen, listen to this. Napoleon Hill said, Effort only fully releases its reward after a person refuses to quit. I'm going to read that again. Effort only fully releases its reward after a person refuses to quit. After a person refuses to quit. After a person refuses to quit. Are you at the point that you're determined no matter what obstacles are you're going to face? Are you at the point that when a problem comes, you're going to learn, you're going to go to God, you're going to learn what He's saying, and you're going to fail forward? Say it fell forward. The Apostle Paul tells us, Galatians 6, 9, he says, Don't grow weary in well-doing, for at the proper time you will reap if you faint not. See, God is no respecter of person. Let's finish strong here. If God helped David, God will help you and I. If God helped Moses, He will help you and I. If God helped Noah, He will help you and I. If God helped Pastor Robert, He will help you and I. God is no respecter of person. And when we make the decision, I'm going to learn and I'm going to fail forward. 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 Say it. I'm going to... I'm going to fail forward in my relationships. I'm going to fail forward in my businesses. I'm going to fail forward in the arena. I'm going to fail forward. And I'm not going to be afraid of making mistakes. I'm not going to be afraid to take the next step. I'm not going to be afraid to shake my head again. I'm not going to be afraid to throw it again. I'm not going to be afraid to ride like I, this is the only run that matters. I'm going to fail. Talk to me. If we keep doing this, our story could read like some of these guys. Listen to this. Admiral Perry attempted to reach the North Pole seven times before he made it on try number eight. John Creasy received 743 rejection slips from publishers before one word was ever published and he went on to publish 560 books. Sold more than 60 million copies. Now studies say that kids hear you cannot do it 150,000 times before you're 18 years old. And you hear, yes you can, 5,000. That's a 30 to 1 ratio in our culture developing a mindset into people that you can't do it. But you'll never hear God say, there's no way you can't do it. You'll never hear God say, please get back in the boat, that storm is too long. You'll never hear... You better back down. You're becoming too influential. You better back down. You're just becoming too small. You better back down. You're just, your business is expanding too much. You're always going to hear the Spirit of God saying, Come on. Come on. There's always more. There's more in you than what you're walking in right now. There's more in you in your relationship with me. I need you to fail forward. I need you to be willing to step. You can do whatever God puts in your... Listen. What God puts in your heart to do. You could be... Like Eddie Akar Caro, he is a Hall of Fame jockey. Listen to this, a Hall of Fame jockey. Lost 250 consecutive races before he won his first. Albert Einstein was made to leave school because he was told he was mentally slow. But he fell forward. I'm asking God that this is imprinted on your heart no matter how young or how experienced we are in life. You notice I didn't say old. I said experienced. That's better, right? Now, parents. <laughs> but when a problem comes up, we're not going to fail backwards. We're going we're gonna to fail forward. When that business deal comes up and it might be hard and tough, we're going we're gonna to fail forward. When the relationship thing might be in, in, in tension, we're going we're gonna to fail forward. 
We're going to fail forward. He said, I'm going to fail forward. I'm not going to be afraid. You don't have to repeat this. I'm not going to be afraid of failure, but I'm going to fail forward. I'm not going to be afraid to make mistakes. I'm going to fail forward. I'm not going to be afraid to run at the line. I'm going to fail forward. I'm not going to be afraid to take my first shot. I'm going to fail forward. I'm not going to be afraid to invest. I'm going to fail forward. I, me and God are the majority, and with God all things are possible if we choose to believe. Say it fell forward. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes, and I want to pray over you. Because all of us are in different places going through different things. And Father, I just ask that You recall this to our heart and our mind. That You're for us, You're in us, You're with us. And we're not afraid to make mistakes. We're going to fail forward. We're going to do our best to hear Your voice and to act on Your Word. And we're going to go towards You. We're going to be difference makers in this world by failing forward. That we have a different perception after today a failure. But Father, we know success starts with a relationship with You. With every head bowed and every eye closed, and I know most of you know where you're at with the Lord, but with nobody looking around except the leadership team here, I want you to look inside your heart just for a few more moments. Let's finish strong here. When you look inside of your heart, are you confident that you're going to spend eternity with God? Can you look back on a time in your life that you yourself asked Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? When you look into your heart, is there a certainty that if you were to die today, you know that you would spend eternity with God? Because the Bible says when a person receives Jesus... That person receives eternal life and that person knows that they have eternal life. That person knows that they have eternal life. Do you have that knowing on the inside of you? If you don't have that knowing, if you can't look back and see a day or a moment that you settled where you're going to spend eternity, kids or parents, grandparents, it doesn't matter. Would you make right here, right now, the moment you can always look back on and say, that was the day that I settled where I was going to spend eternity? Maybe some of you have said that we're going to say a very simple prayer. We're going to do it out loud and we're going to do it together. And maybe some of you have done this prayer 50 times, but you've never truly believed it. And today is the day that you're going to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead for you. And you're going to declare with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord like your eternal destiny depends upon it. Because it does. And when you do that, the life of God enters you and you become a new person in Christ. You come into the family of God. You receive forgiveness. And the best days are ahead of you, not behind you. So can we pray this prayer together out loud, all of us with friends and family? And the reason I do it with all of us is because I want the people doing it for the first time. I want them confident of the prayer that they're praying. I want you to be familiar with the heartbeat of this prayer so you can pray with your friends and your family whenever the opportunity comes. Would you pray this with me out loud like you mean it? Would you say, Father God, today is the day that I make the decision to believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead to give me life. And right now, I accept that life. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. And according to God's Word, I am forgiven, I am saved, and I can be certain that I'll spend eternity with Almighty God. Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you were serious about saying that prayer for the very first time in your life, on the count of three, I want you to slip your hand up in the air and hold it there, acknowledging to God and acknowledging to me that today was the day that you settled where you're going to spend eternity. Are you ready? On the count of three, just slip your hand up there and hold it. One, two, three. Would you just slip it up there? God sees that hand back there, and this one, and that one, and this one. Hold it up there, and that one, and that one, and this one here, and these here, and this one here, and that one here, and those in the back back there, and these here on the side, and those on the side over there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You can put your hand down. Now look up at me. 
The Bible says the angels in heaven are rejoicing over those that made Jesus their Lord for the very first time. Amen? That is the greatest thing that you'll ever do in your life. But listen, that's just the beginning. You're settled. You're going to spend eternity with God. But God wants us to live in victory here on this earth. And one of the ways that we're going to do it is learning that when life happens, we're going to... We're going to fail forward. We're going to do what? Fail forward. We're going to fail forward. If you made that decision for the first time, and there was a lot of you that did, please come from myself. Pastor Robert, there's other people here that, man, you could tell them. We, we have Bibles up here. We want to get that to you. We want to do our best to help you find a good Bible teaching church wherever you live. You can let us know. We'll do our best to connect with you, help you get plugged in. How many of you have watched Cowboy Channel before? Okay, so you know where it's at. Every Sunday morning, my program is on Sunday morning at Cowboy Channel. RFD's at, at 5.30, Cowboy Channel's at 10.30. We're on other networks throughout the week. There's all kinds of things to grow. How many of you want to get better at your roping? Your rodeo and your event and rodeo. We're here, right? We want to get better. What does it take to get better? You're surrounding yourself with the right people. You're getting the right information and you're applying it. It's the doers of God's Word that get results. Guys, thank you so much for coming today. We want to pray with you, pray for you. Don't forget tomorrow, as soon as the performance is over, we're going to do this again. Justin Davis will be here with myself. We're going to get into God's Word, learn how to overcome, how to win in life, how to be the best us we can be. We bless y'all. Don't forget the QR codes. The offering buckets are back there for uh, the rodeo ministry. We love you guys. We're